Am I the arsehole for giving my mother-in-law a fake copy of our house skin exposing her at Christmas dinner? I want to preface this by saying I married my husband about a year ago. His mum is extremely snoopy and annoying as fuck. She can't help it and it's just how she is as my lovely in-laws say. So me and my husband moved into a new house recently but my mother-in-law kept pushing to get an emergency key and she promised that she would only use the key in an emergency but given that she had a key for our old apartment and she walked in on us being intimate twice, my husband didn't think it was a big deal. I just didn't feel like I could trust this woman but since she kept pushing I sent her a fake key and she had the most smug look on her face when I hand delivered her the key. So days and weeks go by and on Christmas dinner my mother-in-law angrily calls out the fact that I gave her a fake key and she shamed me for doing this in front of everyone so in my defense i asked her how she'd found out it was fake and she said her and her husband had been around at about four when me and my husband were at the house so at that point i reminded her didn't you say you would only use it if there was an emergency so basically you tried to get in when there was no emergency and you broke the promise you made to us she started to go red in the face and everyone started to stare at her and some even laughed at her for how red she was going she then got up from her seat and ran into the kitchen where she had the biggest meltdown it was so loud that even the neighbors next door could hear her I've never heard a 60 plus year old woman throw a tantrum like that. Needless to say, the rest of the dinner was really awkward. My husband and his sisters kept giving me looks and then my husband went off at me in the car. He said that I lied, exposed, humiliated, manipulated his mom and he said he wouldn't have let me get away with this if he didn't know. And we then had this argument and he's now demanding that I apologize to his mom. He said that I need to apologize for my childish behavior and ruining Christmas dinner for the whole entire family. So what do you think? Am I wrong for choosing to celebrate my sister's birthday instead of my dad's wedding? I, 27 male, have always been close with my younger sister, Mary, 20 female. Mary has been overlooked by my dad from the moment she was born. My dad never wanted a daughter and tensions with his ex-wife, Mary's mom, led him to basically excluding her from everything. Nothing she ever does is good enough for him and she's often excluded from family gatherings. I always try my best to include her or even take her out, just the two of us, to make her feel better. But it's obvious that being excluded hurts her a lot. I am my dad's golden child and grew up spoiled and while she tries to to not show it, I can tell Mary is jealous of the attention my dad gives me. A month from now is Mary's 21st birthday and she's very excited about it. I live in a different state but I made a promise to fly over on her birthday so that I could take her out to get her first drink. We have been planning this for months and I already got the tickets. My dad, 56 male, is currently engaged to Janice, 57 female, and a few days ago he texted me letting me know that their wedding plans changed and they plan to get married in their parents yard on June 8th. He said he knew it was short notice but they agreed that a small ceremony would be better so that they could go to the beach for their honeymoon while it was still nice. Now my problem isn't the short notice, my problem is that June 8th just so happens to be Mary's birthday. Like not even a day before or later, no, he plans to get married on his daughter's birthday. I brought that up and my dad brushed it off saying it's just a date and it wasn't like my sister was going to celebrate her birthday with us anyways. I told my dad I already had plans to fly down and celebrate Mary's birthday with her and I wouldn't be able to make both events. He seemed shocked by this and asked why I didn't just cancel for his wedding since I'm already paying to come down. I could even bring Mary along and celebrate her there if it meant that much to me. I'll admit this pissed me off because the least he could do was acknowledge his daughter's birthday. I told my dad that I plan on spending my day with Mary and the only way I will come to his wedding is if she is invited and decides to go. He tried to argue with me saying that birthdays come every year and weddings don't to which I responded that this is his third so it's not that special but my sister turned 21 is. My dad hasn't spoken to me since, but Janice and other family have been calling and texting me non-stop. Janice told me that my dad has been crying and miserable over what I said and that my selfishness has ruined their wedding. I'll admit that what I said may be harsh, but I also stand by it. I am not the one being selfish here, and if my dad wants his child at his wedding so badly, he can have all or nothing. However, my dad and family are still mad at me saying that I'm being petty and ruining his big day. So, am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for fake sleeping all night to see if my wife's lying? The last couple of months, my wife had been complaining about our cats. Been complaining that they keep waking her up and that she has to keep getting up and opening the door for them. Or is it the cats keep making noises or they keep jumping on her? And it got to the point where she told me that she wanted me to get rid of them. And I said I'd never seen or heard any of what she was saying, but she claimed that I kept sleeping through it all. She kept saying that she was getting less and less sleep and started acting aggressive. She put the aggression down to her not sleeping and said that if I didn't get rid of them that she would end up leaving me. I had legitimately started to think about giving the cats to my sister before I noticed something. This one morning, she woke up and she claimed that she'd gotten up multiple times in the night to help out the cats. 
and she started to list like a bunch of times that she'd got up with the cats in the night but i thought that was a little bit weird because i'd been awake since 4 a.m and she claimed that she woke up at 1 a.m to let the cats out to open the door and then a couple of times around three because they were meowing loads and they kept jumping all over her i was in the bedroom the whole entire night while she slept and things just weren't adding up so i decided to run a test so I waited till she was gonna go to bed. I let the cats out of the room and then I lowered my phone brightness as well. I then faked going to sleep and I just lay there for the entire night, just awake. I got so bored. And thankfully I didn't fall asleep. I made sure to make timestamps on my phone on Discord just to make sure. And I was making sure to make timestamps every little noise that my cats made that night. So one of the cats jumped down from something and it made a little noise at about 3.18 a.m. And the other one ate food by the door, relatively quiet at about 4.18 a.m. Other than that, literally nothing happened. Sure enough, she slept from 11 p.m. till 9 a.m., but woke up saying that she'd been up at least seven times in the night because of the cats. She said that she kept waking up to have to open the doors for the cats and that they kept jumping all over her. And I was so pissed because she was very clearly lying to me. I was just so exhausted and fed up with the lies that I bluntly called her out on it. I told her, well, that's funny because I stayed up all night last night to monitor the cats and they weren't even in the room most of the night either. I said, I have timestamps. Why have you been lying to me and trying to get me to get rid of my cats? And she just sat there quietly shaking and looking pissed. She then got up and left the room without answering. She then came back hours later but kept ignoring me whenever I talked to her. And then I finally asked her how I was the bad guy in this situation. Then she finally said that she felt like I treated her like a child by lying about being asleep and trying to catch her out in her lie. And that making timestamps as if I was an investigator was going too far. And she said that I was being an obsessive arsehole. And I only did it because she was threatening to get rid of the cats or she'd leave me. And her claims just weren't adding up. Hey, am I wrong for uninviting my mom from the wedding because she kept insisting I invite my sister? My sister Anna suffered a TBI in a car accident. She doesn't get a lot of social cues, is slow to respond, and sometimes throws tantrums like a moody teen. I do love and care about her, but the easiest way to explain it is that sometimes she acts like a child. Now I'm getting married early next year, and my wedding is something I've dreamed about for years. So I'll put it bluntly, I don't want Anna coming to the wedding. My mom would be hovering all over her, and she might be distracting during the ceremony or reception. I suggested that we book a room for Anna at a nearby hotel. That way, if needed, mom can go check in on her. But my mom is saying that I should be including my sister. I tried explaining I just want this perfect day, but my mom does not want to hear it. We're not having kids at the wedding under 13, and I made the mistake of bringing that up in front of mom in relation to Anna and the behavior, which did not go over well. We had a big argument, and I uninvited her. Am I the asshole for not letting my son-in-law stay in my house with my daughter? Disclaimer, this is not my story. This is an anonymous submission. I, 53 female, have a 33-year-old daughter. She and her 34-year-old husband of four years have a three-year-old son together and a two-year-old daughter together. Now, cutting to the chase. My son-in-law has been unemployed for over a year now. In college, where he and my daughter met, he majored in business administration with a focus on the entertainment industry. He landed a prestigious full-time offer before graduating, and my daughter dropped out of college to move with him for his job. She concerned her days with making sure he had a good meal and was a supportive girlfriend to come home to. He rose in the ranks and was doing very well. However, after they married and had their son, my son-in-law became very bitter about the industry he worked in. Apparently, a friend of a friend was working long hours and nearly died because he fell asleep at the wheel. He became obsessed over the complicated laws behind all these workers. He said he disagreed that these workers were all contractors and also something about whether they should be getting overtime. His crusade got him passed over for promotions. He'd come home depressed. My daughter was terrified of what that meant for their future. He then started recruiting people to file labor department complaints against the man who gave him his first big break in the terms of employment. He was not fired then, but a while later when the company started cutting the fat, he was the fat. And now my daughter and him are behind on rent when they were previously on track to buy a house. My son-in-law has applied everywhere, asked for favors, but even his friends said that they don't want to make waves by hiring him. My daughter would apply for jobs, but she has two kids to look after. They have been fighting, and the landlord told them that he wouldn't file for eviction if they moved out within a week and a half. I told my daughter that my house is always going to be here for her and her kids. However, she brought up the fact that her husband still does not understand her point of view. Namely, that this little war didn't just put his fate in jeopardy, but that of his family. He was so concerned about other families, he threw his own under the bus. My daughter was on the fence about living with my son-in-law. I wasn't. I told my son-in-law he needed to find some other place to stay, because I didn't want him here. And to find a job outside of the industry. He said he'd find a job outside the industry, but nothing has turned up. 
He did drive to Long Beach for an interview, but hasn't heard back in two weeks. Without a job, I'm afraid he'll just mope around my house, making my daughter more upset. My son-in-law is complaining about both my coldness and his wife's, while not seeing things from my daughter's point of view. Meanwhile, I'm living off of what my late husband left for me. And it's not an infinite sum. So as a mother, my daughter and grandkids come first. My son-in-law obviously needs to get a job to save his marriage. Am I wrong for telling someone I'm not friendly when their dog came up to me? I went to this restaurant with my wife and our name was called and to get our tables indoors, we had to cut through the patio. We got stopped for a moment behind a table leaving and saying their goodbyes and in those moments, a lab type dog gets up and starts sniffing my ankles. I look at the owners and say, what the hell? And I point at the dog. They just say the classic line of, oh, don't worry, he's friendly. I admit I was a touch rude and said, well, I'm not friendly, and they pulled the dog back under the table. Then they started saying, if you aren't friendly, you shouldn't be coming to a dog-friendly restaurant. I tell them just because the place is dog-friendly doesn't mean it's okay for your dog to come up to me. I don't want it in my space. They seem baffled that someone didn't like their dog, and he called me an asshole and told me to find somewhere else to walk. I say F off as we head to our table, and my wife did say I was in the right, but I could have been nicer. By the way, in the restaurant is not dog friendly.